A fine modern city, alongside probably the finest natural harbour in the world. Sydney owes its early development to the entrepreneurial Victorians, who traded across the world in their fleets of sailing ships and later ships of steam. Cargoes of wheat, coal, sugar, pig iron, and of course vast quantities of wool from Australia to the rest of the world. Although Sydney is a modern city now, the Australians have not forgotten their past, and the very best of their old buildings have been retained as permanent memorials to those pioneers who founded the city, of which they are justly proud. It is not only buildings that the Australians have restored, their maritime heritage is also important to them, and many fine ships from a bygone age are still afloat or in museums. This is the chronicle of the progress of one such endeavour. The Windjammer, the James Craig, was built at the yard of Bartram and Haswell, Sunderland, England, and was launched in 1874. Originally named the Clan MacLeod, she is 234 feet long, 31 foot 3 inches in the beam and 18 foot 1 inch deep. She displaces 1,430 tonnes and carried cargoes of up to 1,000 tonnes. She was built of riveted iron with iron lower masts and main yards. Her upper masts and yards were of Baltic pine and she carried 12,100 square feet of canvas in 20 individual sails. She had a crew of between 12 and 17 hands. In her working life she sailed every ocean in the world, including rounding Cape Horn some 28 times. In 1911 she was laid up and stripped down as being uneconomic against the competition of steam. But she was re-rigged and put into use in the First World War and worked through until 1922. She was then stripped down to a hulk and eventually towed to Tasmania for use to store coal from an adjacent mine. The mine closed in the 1930s and the James Craig was abandoned. Holes were blown in her side and she settled in shallow water onto a sandy bottom. In March of 1972, a salvage crew from Sydney went to the quiet Richurchy Bay to survey the sad looking hull of the James Craig with a view to rescue and restoration. Their findings were that things were not as bad as previous visual inspections had indicated. In October 1972, serious salvage operations began. The hull was patched and pumps installed and pumping operations put into action and at 5 p.m. on the 24th of October, the rusty but shapely hull of this 100-year-old craft lifted herself from her sandy bed and for the first time in over 40 years was afloat again. Further patching and repairs were carried out to the hull and in May of 1973 she was towed to Hobart to complete works necessary to prepare her for a long sea journey to Sydney. Money raised for the salvage operation soon ran out and it was not until 1985 that sufficient funds were raised to construct a floating dock for this old lady and she was moved to Darling Harbour, Sydney for the serious business of reconstruction. It will be a long-term project, but the intention is to completely refit and re-rig her to her former sailing glory.
work is being carried out by voluntary labour, with a restoration team comprising of a wide variety of skilled individuals. Many companies willingly supply materials and specialist facilities, and the quality of workmanship would, without doubt, have pleased the original builders of this grand old craft. There is still a lot of work to do, but it will be a proud and happy day when once again the James Craig is in full sail. <laughs>